Hi guys, Ross here and welcome back to another video. So in today's video, we're gonna be going over Redshift post effects in Cinema 4D and how we can use them to completely elevate the quality of your renders whilst keeping everything in Cinema 4D. Because sometimes you don't want to export your render to another software and this is a great way to keep everything in 3D and also add that kind of final polish and that final grade, which you would find in post-production. So I'm gonna go over some of the settings I use in my day-to-day -day work and my renders without having to bring it into another software. Just like my previous videos, this is an extract from a longer Patreon video where we went over creating this exterior scene using Forrester, going over texturing, lighting, and rendering. So if you wanna watch the whole video from start to finish, then that is over on Patreon. So I'm gonna stop waffling and let you guys watch the video. Let me know what you think in the comment section down below and I will catch you on the flip side. Enjoy. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to enable photographic exposure. So let's enable that. Straight away, that's gonna lift our scene. It's gonna lift those shadows and it's just gonna feel a lot lighter overall. It's gonna clamp your overexposure to 0.1. So basically, if we increase this, you're gonna see that's affecting the brighter areas of the scene. And obviously if you have it super low, it's gonna clamp them. Everything's gonna look quite flat. But as I mentioned, I do like to keep my images quite flat and then we can dial in the contrast in something like the color controls or even using the LUT. So I'm gonna keep the allowed overexposure at something like 0.4 and press enter. And that's just gonna lift that ever so slightly while still keeping it fairly even. And we can also play with the f-stop to lift the overall scene a little bit more. So maybe I'll drop this down to like six. Now we have quite a bright scene and it looks quite flat. You can see already it's made quite a bit of a difference. And by default, you're gonna have allow desaturation. And that is fine because it's just gonna desaturate it ever so slightly. But also you can take the saturation down as well. So I might drop that to something like 0.8. And again, that's just gonna take some of the color out or vice versa if you wanted a super saturated look you could bump up this saturation. I'm gonna go for 0.8 and that's just gonna desaturate that. And that is fine for now. And that's pretty much it for photographic exposure. Next, we're gonna dive into color controls and this is gonna really allow us to dial in some more contrast. And actually, I just remembered something. In photographic exposure, we have this super underrated slider, which I've started to play with recently. And that is the black crush amount. Now, obviously at the moment, we have this quite flat desaturated image. And the great thing about this is that we can crush the shadows whilst not giving more contrast to the highlights. So for example, if I was to go to color controls and increase the contrast, it's gonna crush those shadows, but it's also gonna boost those highlights. You can see the sky in the background is just like way overexposed and it just doesn't look that great. Now, the great thing about black crush amount is like I said, we can crush these shadows, but it's still gonna keep those highlights at that quite underexposed setting we have from you know setting this allowed overexposure quite low. So it's really useful for dialing in, dialing in some contrast without completely overexposing your highlights. So I might set that to something like 0.3. And you also have a threshold here so we can play with this threshold to affect what areas of the image are gonna get affected and how picky it is with shadows. So if I increase this, you're gonna see more darker areas of the scene are gonna get affected. So maybe I'll go to something like 0.5 and now these shadows in the background are getting affected, these shadows on the trees are getting affected. And now we could probably bring back the black crush amount to something like 0.2. So now we do have some contrast in this scene whilst still kind of retaining a fairly flat image, if that makes sense. So now we can dive into the color controls and this is where we can add some really nice subtle color grading. So first of all, in the RGB slider, I'm gonna add a typical kind of S curve here where we can play with this slider in the bottom left to basically affect the shadows. So if I just get rid of that point, the bottom left is gonna affect the shadows, the middle is gonna affect the midtones, and the top right is gonna affect the highlights. So the typical kind of setup for a curve like this is you create three points. So one in the bottom left, one in the middle, and one in the top right. And now we can control the shadows. So I might just crush these a little bit more to add more contrast. I may drop down the midtones or I may brighten the midtones just to kind of lift the overall image. And then I may affect these highlights depending on the look I wanna go for. I'm just gonna increase those ever so slightly like that. 
and straight away that's going to dial in a bit more contrast into our scene and this is looking good already. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the red channel and this is the great thing about color controls is that we can affect the red, green and the blue channels. So with the red it's going to work the same way so if I create a point in the bottom left I can use this to affect the shadows and I'm just going to create three points. So this first one I'm going to add a little bit of warmth to the grass so that's just going to add some nice warmer shadows into the scene. I'm then going to maybe just keep a little bit of warmth in the midtones as well and maybe then just drop the red in the highlights so that we get more of that blue sky come back in. So we've done that let's go to green and obviously we can use this to kind of change the hue of the green so maybe I will increase the shadows of the green just to bring some more of that green back into the shadows. I may take it out of the midtones just to desaturate it slightly and then the highlights I'm going to leave pretty much in the middle and that is fine just like that. Finally blue this is going to be perfect for affecting the temperature of your scene so I may drop it in the shadows just to keep that warmth in there. I may drop it in the midtones as well just to again keep that green in the midtones and then I may boost it in the highlights to bring that blue tint back into the sky. And there we go. So you can see straight away the before and after how we've started to tint that green color of the grass and just give some really nice overall color grading to our scene which is like I said really going to help to kind of elevate and give this visual that final polish it deserves. Now we can also add some exposure to this so I could increase this exposure to something like 0.7 and that again is just going to boost the brightness of the scene which is going to help to lift those shadows, boost those highlights and you can also dial in some contrast. So I tend to use quite small numbers when it comes to this because if you go too heavy it's just going to completely crush everything in your scene and it just looks a little bit messy. So with that color controls, we boosted the exposure, boosted the contrast and given it some really nice color grading. Now to finish this off, we've got the final piece of the puzzle. We've got the cherry on top of the cake. We're going to enable LUTs. So let's enable this and we're going to apply color management before LUT. And the other thing I've started to play with recently, which I think gives a really nice kind of finish to your visuals is enabling convert to log space before applying LUT. Now this one I've played with recently and obviously you can use any one you would like. This is the one I used for the render and that is the REEE log C R709. So if I click this you can see with a LUT strength of one this gives a crazy amount of contrast. Again just looks way too clamped in the shadows and overexposed in the highlights but if I convert this to log space you're going to see now it gives it a very kind of flat image. Now what I would do is if I am converting it to log space is I'll use this LUT quite sparingly so I'll maybe drop it down to something like 0.3 so 0.35 maybe and now you can see straight away how we've kind of lifted those shadows back up. It's brought a bit more of that color back into the scene because it has lifted the shadows and everything just feels a lot easier on the eyes. It feels a lot dreamier which is great for these kind of surreal landscapes if you are doing landscapes and I just think it works really well and obviously you can flick through all these different LUTs and get some really nice results just by converting it to log space and the great thing about this as well I'm just going to maybe put it on F125 because that's quite a nice kind of retro LUT. The great thing about converting it to log space is now you have a lot more flexibility with these other parameters. So now we can dial up this contrast a lot more. So maybe we can go to like 0.15. We could go into the curves and we could drop the curves down on those shadows. We could go to the photographic exposure and crush those blacks a little bit more. And just by using that log space we have a lot more flexibility and I think this gives us a much nicer result. Now if you're unfamiliar with log space if I was to Google log space footage or to be honest just log video let's see images let's see log video let's have a look you can see 
that this is a format that videographers record in where basically everything just looks super like grayscale and flat. So you can see here is like a kind of comparison. So the log uncolored just looks very desaturated. There's not many shadows, there's not many highlights. And this is for the same reason why I've used it. And that is to allow you to have more leverage when it comes to adding contrast in post-production, adjusting the color grading, adjusting saturation, everything really when it comes to post-production. You just have a lot more flexibility if you convert it to a log space. So. This is quite a common practice when it comes to recording video. Like I said, just gives you a lot more flexibility. So there's tons of examples of people using this. And this is something I recently discovered in the Redshift Post Effects, which I have started to use a lot more in my renders just because by giving it that flatter look, as I've said for like the 10th time now, <laughs> you just have a lot more flexibility when it comes to the post production. So thank you guys for watching this video. Hopefully you found it useful and there's some knowledge in there that you can take away into your own work. Like I said at the beginning, this is a great way to keep everything in Cinema 4D and in 3D without having to take it to an external program. And sometimes when you're just doing kind of quick personal pieces or even with client work sometimes, this is a great way without having to introduce a whole new software. So if you enjoyed this video, let me know in the comment section down below. And if you wanna watch the full video from start to finish where we go over some more light texturing and rendering and actually building this scene then you can watch that over on patreon so thank you again for watching i hope you enjoy the rest of your day wherever you are in the world and i will catch you in the next one peace